Have you got Facebook up, James? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we are live. Oh, hi. <laughs> We're just having a little giggle and getting ourselves organised. Hi, I'm Louise, and this is baby Willie, who's just arrived from Germany. <laughs> so, um, Willie and I today are going to show you the kind of main types of baby carriers to help you make a decision of what might be right for you. There's sort of five kind of main types. We've got woven wraps here, which are long, beautiful fabric wraps. We've got a ring sling I'm going to show you. A may tie, which is a carrier that ties on, made out of the same sort of fabric. Then we're going to look at a couple of substructured buckle carriers, all tangled up helpfully just to get started. Um, and also a stretchy wrap. So we often get asked what's the best carrier, what's the right carrier for me and the right carrier for you is the one that fits your lifestyle and that you like. So um, I'm just going to go through the different sorts and then you can have a look and see when I put them on I'll show you what's involved in putting them on um, and you can see if that kind of is as quick as you need or maybe um, you know whether you like the look of it so you can sort of make some decisions about what's going to work for you. I know quite a lot about carriers, but I'm not used to putting them on live in front of people. So um, if I get tangled up, I hope you're going to be a bit forgiving of me. Right. So, oh, and we are going to have some giveaways. So pan over to our giveaways. Not my cup of coffee. <laughs> Ring sling and the Tula carrier. We're having a Tula week this week, so we thought we'd better have some more Tula giveaways. Lovely. And if you've got questions about carriers in general, or choosing the right carrier, or anything about what I'm putting on, then just post them in the comments and James will let me know and we'll endeavour to answer them. Okay, so we're going to start with a stretchy wrap, which you can see here. It's about five metres long and provides plenty of opportunity for me to tangle myself up in knots. Um, stretchy wrap is often what people choose with a new baby. It can be the first carrier that people um, try. It can be, um, some people will find it really easy to tie and others will just look at the five metres and freak out and put it in the cupboard and never return. Um, it's not nearly as complicated as it looks and actually very forgiving in terms of tying it and getting it just right. There's two sorts of stretchy wraps. This is a two-way stretch. It stretches long ways and up and down. Um, wraps, brands that are two-way stretch are Boba Wraps, um, JPMBB Wraps, um, I'm just trying to think, Tula Wraps, Tula Stretchy Wraps, and then other ones that are one-way stretch are like a Moby Wrap or a By K. So those ones only stretch across the fabric, not lengthways. So I'll show you the difference once I've got it on. So I'm going to put that, I'll put this on now and show you. Stretchy wraps perfect from newborn. And as I say, I normally would do this with, you know, by myself, not in front of people. Okay, so if you have a look, you have a cross across the back. In the middle of the wrap, with its little middle marker here, is in the middle of your tummy. Gather it up and post it down. And you make another cross along the front. Oopsie. Make yourself decent. And then tie it. You can tie it anywhere. Normally I would tie it at the front or the side. If you're sitting down on the sofa, um, feeding your baby or whatever, then don't put the knot at the back because it will be uncomfortable. So that's what it looks like before you apply your baby. So here you can see where the two-way stretch is useful because it gives you that nice comfy downward stretch. Now baby Willy. Baby Willy is about the size of a three-month-old, we think. Okay, so if you have a look there, where the cross is, is where his bottom is going to be. And then we're going to stretch out these two passes here to support his back. 
and also to have the carrier out to his knees so he's sitting on it rather than dangling down. And his head's free. It's the beauty of a stretchy wrap is you can just adjust it if you need to. And then where we started with the middle marker is somewhere underneath here. And this just goes up over the back, up to the back of the a little baby up to sort of the back of the neck and stretch the excess down and up under the knees. Ta da! Didn't tangle myself. Whoopee! <laughs> Any questions about the stretchy wraps, James? Uh, no questions yet. Where are all your questions, people? Is anybody actually watching? <laughs> yeah, we've got a few people. We've got 90 people watching at the 90 moment. 90 people. Hello yeah. to you, 90 people. So that's the stretchy wrap. You can use it. Um, most people would start using a stretchy wrap from newborn. You can use it. Um, how long can you use it for? Until it's not comfy, until you feel that your baby's weight is ending up stretching. Like if Willie weighed six or eight kilos, he'd probably be stretching down here somewhere. So kind of rule of thumb is about six months, but... You know, it really just depends on which wrap you have, how good you are at tying it, whether you've got something else. Um, some of the other Slinger Baby consultants that I know have tried stretchy wraps with their four-year-olds and found it quite comfy. Um, but, you know, for a good rule of thumb is about six months, you'd get a lot of use out of it in that time. Safety-wise, just make sure your baby's airways are free, so baby out of your squishy chest, up where it's nice and firm. Um, fabric away from baby's face and your second main safety check is that your hands are free. Ta-da! Okay, got a couple of questions coming. Oh! Is it quite lightweight? Is it quite lightweight? The boba wrap is one of the thicker wraps, so if you can have a look, it's like a brushed jersey, so it's like a thick t-shirt fabric, so stretchy wrap is not the coolest option by any stretch, because you've got three layers across your baby. So there are some brands of stretchy wrap which are more like weight, like the Rhapsody, um, there's a brand called Happy which is just new to New Zealand, um, Checo from Australia which they were meant to send us some stock about a month ago, they're on their way for summer. Um, so there are some stretchy wraps which are lighter weight but I'll go through some of the other options which might be better if you're somewhere really hot. Can you use it front facing? Yes you can, yep there's lots of different ways you can tie it. This is just the normal um, way, the commonest way that you tie a stretchy wrap, but there's lots of different ways, like I'll show you another one um, something like I used to use this with my youngest if we were out at the park or something and he would start to get grouchy, I would pop him sideways, so this is called the seated sideways position which um you can Google the instructions, so something like that can be, rather than straight out forward facing, give a little baby a really nice supported, you know, better view than if they're just facing you. And that's the beauty of the stretchy wrap, it's so forgiving, you don't have to take it off, you can just lift up your baby and twist them around. Could you do damage to the baby's hips if they're sitting wrong in the lap? You'd have to be using it an awful lot and sitting them really wrong to cause some damage. If your baby has got hip dysplasia or if you're concerned about your baby's hips then you should meet with a baby carrying consultant and you should also speak to your specialist. Um, but baby carrying can actually help with hip dysplasia because it's holding your baby, baby's hips in a really comfortable safe position. So the main thing is to make sure that your baby, that the um, carrier supports your baby out to the knees and that their knees are higher than their bottom so they're sitting rather than legs dangling down. Uh, Sophie has a couple of questions uh, which wraps are good for large or, and long babies or wraps or sling. Uh, she has she has a little boy who's six months old uh, 70 centimeters tall and eight and a half kg but she's not too tall and she feels like they butt heads or they might they might butt heads they might butt heads. It could be that you need to wear whatever you're carrying lower down to give your baby enough space. Or if your baby's, did you say six months? Six months. So yeah. by six months, if your baby's got good head control, it might be that a hip carry might start to be more useful. Um, and once your baby is sitting up quite happily, um, you could even do, start doing back carries. 
So in terms of which carrier will fit, any of the carriers will fit. It might be that you just need to experiment with, you know, which position you carry in. Okay, so that was a stretchy wrap. What would people like to see next? Maybe we'll go on to a soft structure carrier. Okay, so this is a soft structured carrier here. This is the Beko Gemini which is, um, for our New Zealand customers, it's our most popular carrier now for using from newborn. Super easy to use and fits from about, well, fits from newborn up until um, about two to um, 16 kilo weight limit. So basically you've just got a buckle at the back, and you've got a padded waistband, and when you're putting on a buckle carrier, make sure that your waistband's straight. Often people will have it too loose and it will go in this kind of angle which then puts all the pressure on your back. So get it tight enough. And start with it on your actual waist. Resist the temptation to be like a teenager and have your pants hanging down. <laughs> <laughs> so with this carrier, how low you sit your baby in determines how high up the back comes. So it's, it's important, particularly with a newborn, with any carrier that you don't have it right up over their face because obviously that could be a suffocation hazard so get the size right so with a newborn up to the nape of the neck okay, so this carrier has uncrossable straps so if you have back problems or if you're concerned about whether a carrier will be comfy, looking for one that offers crossable straps can be a good option. Plenty of opportunity to get tangled up. Okay, so that's the basic fit of a soft structured carrier. Nice natural curve of the spine. You can reach in and tilt your baby's pelvis so that their tailbone is the lowest part. You can get the up and the bum down. It's nice and safe from a clear airways point of view. Fabric's nice and smooth over the back. Ta-da! Hands free. Um, what else to say about this? Just tightening a carrier is easy. Lift it up and pull on the opposite side. Yeah, so this one um, is adjustable across the base here, so as the baby gets bigger you can use a wider setting, so a bunch of carriers like the Lily Baby, the Kakadi Flip, um, what else, Emi Baby, there's quite a few where you can adjust the seat and so you can get the perfect fit. But the basic things with a buckle carrier like this is that it's quick to put on, you don't need to fiddle around with the sizing or the adjustments. Um, if it's just you who uses the carrier then you don't even need to adjust your buckles, you just unclip it and then next time clip it and it will fit just right. Is it heavy on the shoulders? Nope. Oh. Um, I can still carry my 19 kilo six year old in a buckle carrier for quite a long time and it's still really comfortable and way more comfy than if you were just lifting a child. So any kind of hands-free carrier, particularly a really ergonomic one with some extra padding and um, you know fitting you just right, you'll find it much, much lighter than just lifting him up. Okay. So it's got a little neck support too. Carly has a question about, she has a, a mums and papas wrap, but wonders if it's still suitable to use a hurdle man who's nearly one and nearly 10 kg. Is it a stretchy? No, I don't know the mums and papas wrap. If it's a stretchy wrap, 10 kilos is getting quite heavy for a stretchy wrap. So you might want to look at your manufacturer's instructions if you don't have the instructions still uh, maybe their website would be able to help you with that. Um, at 10 kilos of stretchy wrap, you'll need to be really secure in the way that you tie it so that you're not kind of having to constantly readjust it when the weight is pulling downwards on it. If it's not a stretchy wrap, let us know what it is and we can clarify. Not stretchy. Not stretchy. So is it a carab sling? Maybe just awesome. give us some more information because I don't know that one. <laughs> Sorry to not, not be more helpful. Okay, so now we're going to try on um, Tula. So Tula's one of our most popular buckle carriers. 
click um, I think it, when I checked yesterday we had something like 135 different Tula products on our website constantly having new designs coming out so this is a new Tula insert so the reason I'm showing you Tula and a Beko, Beko is a carrier that doesn't require a newborn insert. Some of the buckle carriers like a Tula or an Ergo Baby require something like this. So that your baby's hips aren't open too wide and you can use it to tilt their pelvis so that their knees are higher than their bum. We are going to give away a Tula, aren't we, later? What's that? Are we giving away? Oh, it's a Beko, is it? No, that's the tool there. Oh, there's a tool that we're going to give away. As Georgie is mm. going to zoom in <laughs> to this. Can you pick it up please before we get in the future? That's it, perfect. This tooler is called Ed Speedway. The fabric was chosen by my now six-year-old Ed. <laughs> um, and we would like to give this away to somebody who's watching today. So you can just comment Ed um, to be in the draw to win that. And now I'm going to show you how to put it on. So this is Willie going into the infant insert. So you can see that he's sitting. I'm going to just zoom in there. You can see. Well, he's sitting in the insert like it's a little seat. And so that just means that rather than his hips opening that wide, the whole width of the carrier, his hips are only opening what you know how they would naturally fall open, because we don't want to force them into an unnatural position. I wouldn't recommend that you put your baby into a carrier on a table. That's purely for demonstration purposes. On your bed or on the floor is a good option. So you can see the difference with the Tula compared to the Beko. It's much, much wider. So this carrier will fit up to a three-year-old quite comfortably it's got a 20 kilo limit rather than 16 but the hips have to be much wider before this will fit or you use the insert so when you're using the infant insert just hold your baby in the position that you would be holding them if they weren't in the carrier so get them in a nice comfy supported even with a fake baby it's natural to pat and jiggle Jiggle and patch, get your baby in that nice position. If it feels like the baby in the insert, because they're boosted up with the cushion, if they're like right up in your face, <laughs> you can drop the waistband a little bit lower. But you just need to make sure that you keep your baby out of your squishy chest, remember, up on the firm part. When do they not need the insert? Do they not need the insert? When their hips can open wide enough, <laughs> that they will be comfortable. And also, the Tula insert and the um, Ergo Baby 2 provides this extra head support because these, I'll just have the hood off so you can see a bit better. Um, these don't have a lot of structure, so it's the, so the insert which provides the neck support. So, probably by about five or six months, um, you might start to find um, that they don't need it. Some little babies will still be in the insert at seven or eight months. So I'm just going to show you one of the questions that people often have with the buckle carrier is how on earth do you do up the strap that goes behind your head? Do it up first, put it over your head, and then tighten the straps. And then once you start to tighten your straps, you'll find that the chest strap comes down to the right position. Just find the strap. <laughs> the idea. So you can see again, nice curve of the spine, knees are higher than the bum and you can reach in and do that little pelvis tilt if you need to to get the tailbone down. So you can see there there's plenty of nice clear air for baby Willie and his neck supported hands free. Okay. Is there much difference between a Tula and an Ergo baby? There's now three different models of Ergo Baby, which confuses us quite a lot. So this is most like the original Ergo Baby, which James, if you want to rummage for the grey galaxy over there, that's it. So well, you make it look so easy. 
Ta-da! Thank you, James. <laughs> so this is an original Ergo Baby, so you can see the shape is pretty similar to a Tula, um, you know, compared to what we've got over there. They're actually discontinuing the original Ergo Baby. Um, they've gone into more kind of technical or more structured carriers like the 360, um, which you can see has much more shaping to it. So the Tula is a very simple shape. Ergo Baby 360 has this kind of bucket seat that you can adjust and it has different settings for the size of the baby and whether they're facing in or out. So yeah, lots of different ways to adjust it. So similar to a Tula in that it's a buckle carrier and it um, you know, has a good age range, you need an insert but quite different in terms of the way it actually looks and fits. Oh, and this one. And this is the Ergo Baby Adapt, so this is sort of in between the Tula and the Beko Gemini. It's got different seat adjustments, you can use it from newborn. Change the size of the seat, it's got adjustments here too that you can make it littler. And you don't need to use an insert with this one. So this Ergo Baby Adapt goes from newborn up to 20 kilos. Can you cross straps on the Tula? Um, hmm. So the Ergo is an adapt you can, although it's got some slightly strange shaping, so it doesn't quite, it does work. Um, Tula you can't cross straps because of this here, you can see that the, um, the way the buckles, the buckles are actually secured, whereas with a Beko or something both ends snap together. Okay, you're really testing me. 360, yes, 360 you can cross straps. They come off like that. Uh, what carry would you recommend for a nine month old? Uh, 10 kgs? I think. Or would you even recommend? Do you even, do you, or would you even need a carrier, a carrier at that age? Well, that's a really good question. You definitely would, in my mind. I mean, as I say, I still occasionally carry my six year old. Um, we travelled overseas for two months last year and I used it every single day when he got tired or when we were at airports or place, busy places. Any time we go to Eden Park and there's 40 or 50,000 people, I always take the carrier for him because I don't want to lose him, he's quite precious. Um, carrier enables you to do lots of things without having to hold your baby. So things like Christmas shopping, would you like to go to the mall with your push chair and do your Christmas shopping? Or do you want to just pop your baby on your back and you know do your things? or um, you know, a lot of people will use a carrier at the supermarket rather than have their baby in the trolley. There's lots of reasons, lots of, um, you know, our family do a lot of hiking and um, a lot of kind of outdoor things that just, just can't use a push chair for. So even when our kids were quite little, we've got four, so it's a big age range. So when Eddie was little, you know, I had an eight-year-old and he wanted to do eight-year-old things, so always taking littler kids along with bigger kids. So yeah, it, it um... What did you say? Nine, ten months? Um, ten months. kilos. Yeah. So there's still lots and lots of reasons that you'd need a carrier. Which one is right kind of depends what you like the look of, whether you want to tie it or whether you just want to clip and go. Something like a Tula is a really good option for that age because it will fit without the insert um, and it will fit you up until, you know, two or three. So that kind of shape. Do enter to win our speedway there it would be perfect but um there's lots of other ones like the boba 4g um is a really good one for that age range it will fit up to a three-year-old um yeah there's plenty of different carriers that will fit for that age and you'd recommend them for both mum and dad use absolutely yep yep one of um one of the other slinger baby consultants jess is doing this amazing project about why dad's baby wear so if you look up baby wearing with Jess, you'll see all the pictures of the dads with dad quotes. Um, and quite a few um, pictures of dad gaming or drinking beer at the pub with the baby attached. So yeah, good carrier is adjustable and will fit um, you know, either mum or dad. Is there a, which is the best carrier if you have back issues? Right, that's a good question. Um, it might be worth either making an appointment 
to see a consultant. You can, if you're in Auckland, you can make an appointment to see us, or we can recommend somebody um, if you're elsewhere. Um, or going to a sling library and just trying a bunch of different carriers. Often back issues, um, it's so much more ergonomic using a carrier than just lugging a baby around or my, you know, pet haters seeing people with capsules like on this kind of angle with just the weight of the capsule without the baby is enough to put your back out. Um, so it could be that using a carrier will be better than what you're doing already. Um, and then it comes down to getting it to fit right, like what I said at the beginning about having the angle of the waistband. If you don't have your carrier on right, it can exacerbate a sore back. But if you've got it on and it's fitted properly for you, then you'll find it's, it's probably much better than what you're already doing. We've got a few questions regarding, um, can you back carry on the um, Can you front and back carry on the uh, Yes, you can front and back carry on a Tula. I'm not going to do demos of back carrying today because that's a whole nother saga, but we could do that another day. But they're absolutely fine and they're pretty easy to get onto your back, particularly once your babies are bigger. You can back carry um, some some carriers like the the fabric ones. You could back carry much earlier if you're you know an experienced um, or if you practice a lot <laughs> um, with a tula or a, that, a soft structured carrier. Your baby needs to be able to sit up. Um, they've got to have good neck support. You're obviously still checking on them. You can still feel them there, but you know, in terms of slumping down um, and potentially cutting off the airways, you want to be sure that your baby's holding its head up strongly and safe. Uh, and can you back carry with a manduka as well? Yes, you can. Manduka is front or back carry as well. I've just moved my coffee again, so I don't burn baby willy with it. Got a winner for uh, Yeah, there's our winner. Julie Moore, Julia Moore, Julia Moore, this carrier is for you. Ta -da, ta -da. So if you can send um, an email to our inquiries at thesleepstore.co.nz um, and we will send this out to you. We've got a request to show different types of uh, ombu, but we do that next time. That's a whole nother category. We're just looking at the kind of introductory ones today. Okay, so next up is a ring sling, moving right along, and we'll be here all week. So this is, um, I'm just going to show you really quickly how to put on a ring sling, so you can kind of see what's involved, and obviously the more you do it, the quicker you'll get. Ring slings are a really good option from newborn, because they provide really good um, support to the natural curve of your baby's spine. They can still be useful, um, you know, with a toddler, they usually pretty quick to put on and they're really compact. Um, here's the one we're giving away. So now we're talking about ring slings. You can um, email us, uh, message us a ring sling if you want to go in the draw to win this beautiful Tula sling. Um, you know, compared to a soft structured carrier, a ring sling folds up very small. So they're a really good option for keeping just in your um, in your glove box or in your handbag or at the bottom of your push chair or wherever you might need one, nappy bag. Okay, so you basically you thread it through two rings and then back. This isn't a ring sling tutorial by the way, I'll just give you a really quick run through and we can do ring slings in more detail but we've also got um, videos on our website that both Petro and no, Alice. Alice and Tracy have made previously about how to do the threading and all of that. The threading is really important, it works much better if you thread it properly. So basically, just make sure that it's not bunched up or tangled, because you want it to slide smoothly through the ring sling, through the rings. Can you think about a ring sling like a hammock? So if you're thinking of fabric, you want where your baby's bum is going to be is the low point. The high point is where their knees are going to be and their neck on the other side. So you just want to reach down and make sure that the inside is highest, which you adjust here. The middle is the lowest. And this needs to be floppy to get your baby in. So if you've got any ring sling questions, fire them through now. So like with the stretchy wrap, there's lots of different positions that um, you can use 
but I'll just show you the basic front one because under the ear. Uh... We've got a couple of people who said thank you so much, this is really helpful. Oh, that's so nice to hear. And we're just going to pull that in tight. And so the same principle as with the other carriers, you want it supported out to your baby's knees. All the excess, see how I've got this is quite flop, quite a lot of extra fabric here. Just going to smooth all of that down, tuck it all up behind the knees. Do your little pelvic tilt so that tailbone is down and that the knees are higher than the bum. This is easy with a fake baby. Can you do a little turn so we can see on the other side as well? Then? That's it. Hopefully, I didn't okay. angle it. <laughs> that looks good. Erna in Wonderland, I've always quite fancied an Erna in Wonderland and now I get to play with my fake baby with my Erna in Wonderland. That's a very famous design that many people have ogled over. So that's the ring sling. So you can carry um, your baby sideways, in the seated sideways. Um, there's a facing out position called the Buddha position. You can go um, offset round here. With a bigger baby, you can go around onto your hip, um, and you can even back carry if you're really keen. So, any ring sling questions for us? Up to what age can you use a ring sling? Any age, really. I could still squeeze my large six year old into a ring sling. Occasionally, for a joke, I'll take him, carry him off to his bedroom in a ring sling if I've had one at home. Um, a friend of mine is still often uses one with her four year old. Uh, because they're so compact, if you're just occasionally carrying, um, they're quite little to carry around with you. If you're going for a, like a long hike, then this is probably not the comfiest option because it's putting all of the weight on one shoulder. So with an older child, something that you know it spreads the weight from your, both shoulders um, across your back, your hips, the whole kind of you know spread the weight will be better. But in terms of the fabric and the rings, the rings are tested up to a thousand kilos, <laughs> they're pretty strong um, and the fabric is really strong too and because it's spread over a lot of the fabric um, you'll be fine. I'd say easily a 15 kilo toddler um, for short carries would be fine. Any more questions James? Yeah, uh, one regarding, do you find the rails get stuck when you pull it through? On the rings? Um, that's where the threading comes in really important. So I'll just give you another quick demo on that. Also, depending on the thickness of the sling, I really like this one because it's quite light. Like this, when we somebody inquired right at the beginning about summer options, a ring sling is a really good summer option because it's just one layer of fabric and you can get nice thin, something like a Sakura Bloom or a Soul Linen sling or a Kakadi or something that's quite um, lightweight. It's really good for summer, but and the um, thicker the ring sling, often the harder it is to to thread it. So just quickly, so when you put it through first, through both slings, check then that it's not tangled. Check these. Often these seams, some some ring slings have a much chunkier hem, and it can be the hem if it gets fold it over and then you're trying to yank through like six layers of fabric. So then fold it back through and at that point just make sure you want your rings up in the kind of hollow by your collarbone. Take some time at now before you get your baby anywhere near it to separate that all out. Check that those hems aren't tangled up. See that there? That's got a little fold in it. So you want to get those kind of folds out. And then a trick that um, Lorette from Slinger Baby taught us on our course recently is think of your ring sling like the rays of the sun. Ta-da! So you want it spread out and when you come to be adjusting it you want to be pulling it back in the same direction that the fabric comes from. So if the fabric's coming from around here, don't try tightening it over there. Try tightening it back the way that you came. Okay. So yeah, the time, um, when you first start using a ring sling, it can feel really fiddly, but getting it set up right, but that's what will make it useful and easy to adjust. Does baby need a strong to use the ring sling? 
Nope, you can use a ring sling with a one day old baby. So with a new baby, you pull the fabric up to the neck and then gently down to the nape of their neck. Um, and so that provides plenty of support without going over their head. And then as your baby gets bigger, so like with a toddler, you would only need the fabric up to the armpits. So the further up the fabric um, to provide more neck support. Uh, so you just asked uh, about this, this, could you show us a sleeping position? So many mums I've seen using lying bubble, lying bubs down in the slippering sling. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, mm. The cradle position where you would have baby um, this position is the I guess potentially the most dangerous position because if your baby is in the sling and their head is folded onto their chest that can potentially cut off the airways so it's far safer and better to keep your baby in this position they can sleep as long as they're comfy with their you know their bum and their knees supported and their hands up in front like this a newborn will sleep for hours like that in a ring sling and that is a far better option than using the cradle position which requires you know obviously you're constantly monitoring your baby anyway and if they're right here in front of you you can see them as soon as they're down here you risk the sling being over their face you risk um, the airways being cut off so we would always say use your ring sling for sleeping like this up here either off to the side um, if you don't want baby right in your face um, the seated sideways position that I showed you with the stretchy wrap can be a nice one because that's kind of a natural position that you would hold a baby in but you've got the sling around to you know make you hands free so yeah definitely avoid the down here um, neck squished fabric wrapped all around baby uh, what age would you say hip carries are okay Hip carry, the main thing with a hip carry is that your baby's hip, your baby's hips can sit on either side of your hips. So that kind of position. So that's where the um the kind of offset position in between the front and actually round your hip can be a good in-between position. Because the baby's sort of right a little bit away from your face. They can see a little bit more. But really, probably from about five or six months. Similar age to when you would stop using the infant insert in a buckle carrier, once they're comfortable in that position. And you'll know because you would start to naturally sit them in that position. When they're little, they won't, you know, their hips won't open that wide. So just think about it in terms of how you would naturally be carrying your baby and then put the sling around it. Is there a sling that's better for newborns or are they? In terms of an actual ring sling. So I think if you're choosing a ring sling to use with a newborn, um, you don't want anything that's too thick. So some, um, most slings or um, woven wraps, the weight of the fabric is express, expressed in grams per metre, something. Um, so something around 200, 240 maybe would be quite thick enough. Getting into the really chunky ones in the 300s, you might find it's just like too heavy and too much fabric. Um, this sort of fabric is called a jacquard weave, so um, it's got a lot of diagonal stretch in it, and it's really soft to the touch. I'm really selling up the earner. It's so pretty. It's so perfect. <laughs> um, so something like this that, you know, when you feel it, it's really soft. And this one, um, this has never been washed. This is one that's just straight out of the box because I fancied playing with it. Um, a li something like a linen would be Sakura Bloom linen or a sole linen. They're fine for newborns, but you are going to need to kind of wash it and dry it and steam it and things to kind of soften it up. If you think what, like a linen tablecloth or a linen shirt, it's like they're kind of crunchy to start with and then they soften up. So, you know, yeah, any ring slings, as long as it's not really thick and stiff, will be fine for a newborn. Uh, I think it's a general carrier question. Uh, which one is which one is easiest to wash? Hmm. Pretty much all of these ones can go in the washing machine. Um, the only thing really to be mindful is if you get into some blends of fabric that have like silk or wool or anything like that in it, you'd need to make sure about, you know, those kind of things would probably need hand washing. But any kind of buckle carrier, I mean, I just put, put my carriers, like my toolers and that, they've always just gone through the washing machine. Just make sure that you 
you know, do all your buckles up so they don't get tangled. A lot of buckle carriers have these little things so you can, if you're obsessive compulsive, you don't like any dangly messy things, you can keep them done up while you're wearing it, but also if you're washing it, you know, get everything kind of tidied up so it's not going to get caught. Uh, but all carriers, you just look at the washing instructions, machine wash, um, and then also just spot clean them rather than like if you if you're using this tola and it just gets a little a little bit of dirt on it for me i probably just ignore that but if you wanted it clean you know you could just wipe wipe clean the bit you need to because you will get more fading and wear and tear on the fabric if you wash it a lot okay so moving right along not this is any more questions about rings there's just one about a manduka but oh, okay um could you show putting on? She, uh, they say she has a three month old, and her face, and her three month old face always rubs the straps, and she can't fix it. Hmm. Might do that at the end if we've got time. Um. Are you, if and if she's in Auckland, she's welcome to come in for a fitting. Three month old in a manduka is quite a tricky age because the insert's too small, but the width of the seat is too big. Um. So I might come back to that if we get a chance. Okay, so we're going to look at a Meitai now. So Meitai carriers are based on sort of traditional Chinese carriers. So rather than having buckle straps and buckle waist, they have ties. This is the Diva, Diva Meitai. Um, they can look a little daunting, a little overwhelming, um, but they're really actually quite simple to put on. I hope I'm not going to muck it up and like make a liar of myself. <laughs> Some Meitai's have um, an adjustable or cinchable seat where you can get it narrower um, for a smaller baby. But I'm not going to use that, I'm going to show you a trick, because I'm feeling tricky, <laughs> um, that you can roll it over and make your carrier shorter. And then once you've rolled it, you can actually just squish it like that to the right width. So when you're choosing a Meitai, um, you don't have to find one with a cinchable base. If you find one that you like the look of and it doesn't have that feature, you can just squish it or you can squish it and then tie a shoelace or something around to make it smaller. This is another one where I'm going to be trying not to um, get myself tangled up in knots. Okay, so here's where we're just going to make sure that the carrier is the right width little Willie's hips. So see that's out, supported out to his knees, whereas the carrier itself would be too na too wide. So you can just squish it in. These are very soft and easy to adjust. The hood gets in the way though. So basically with this we're going to cross the straps. There's different ways you can use it, but generally with a Meitai you would cross the straps. And try and get it quite spread out, makes it more comfy. And then over one leg and under the other. You just put that there to hold that while I do the other side. Oops, I forgot to say too, with a newborn, you should have your hands are up by the face, not getting tangled up. What if there's a plus side mode? Depends um, on this, on the waist size. Like the diva, I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head what size waist it will go to, but um, that's probably the bit to check. I think I've only had one customer that wouldn't, that couldn't get the diva around their tummy, and it was a, um, a gentleman, and he was very large gentleman. Um, I don't know idea how big, but um, yeah, generally it will. You're always welcome to try it at home, and if you buy one and it doesn't fit, send it back. Or s let us know what measurement you need, and we can check before we send it out. So that's basically your may tie. So it's tied across the back. Get those spread out a little bit more to make it more comfy. Uh, what weights can you carry in the So this one has a 15 kilo weight limit. Um, that's probably common for a Meitai, some of them are a little bit higher depending on the fabric. I'll just find the hood kind of annoying. We'll just poke it in there so you can 
cuts in. So over one leg, under the other, supported out to the knees. Um, do you not want pressure across the spine? And then you could tighten that up if you needed to. Okay. Any other Mei Tai questions? Lots of Mei Tai love. <laughs> Mei Tai love. Oh yes, There's a lot to love about a Mei Tai. I think it's of all the carriers. I think it's the one that I wish I knew about when I had little babies. I get to wear them now as a fake baby. It's not quite the same. <laughs> but I have shared the Mei Tai love. I gave one to my sister when she had a newborn, and and my best friend when she had a newborn last year. Um, I think this might have actually been the very one that one of them borrowed and they both loved it and it was probably for both of them the first carrier that wasn't just the buckle carrier so I got to share the mate I love second hand uh, There's a question about the straps whether they slip um, at all Slip? No Does I think it need to slip? Does it often slip or need retightening? No, it depends on the fabric um, I do, I have played a lot with a different one that was a more slippery kind of linen fabric and I found that that I couldn't get this rolling it and cinching it in to stay. It was definitely more suited to a kind of a six month old than a newborn. Um, you definitely, it's it's probably compared to a buckle carrier, Maytai requires a little bit more learning to get the straps right. Particularly if you want them like spread wide across your back and it really well supported. But um, they shouldn't. You shouldn't be needing to tighten, re-tighten it very often. And how old, um, how old can baby be in a Maytai? What age? From what age? Uh, up to what age? Up to what age? Okay, so from newborn, depending on the size and what fabric it is, um, and some Maytais come in a toddler size, um, and some people custom make them to a preschool size. Um, so, really, whatever size. Yep. Some of them will have a specific weight limit. Like I think the Diva specifically say 15 kilos. But a lot of brands don't. It's just you tie it and you use it until it's comfortable. And check, you know, if you're using a carrier with a heavier baby who's, you know, at the upper end of the weight limit of it or if it doesn't have a weight limit, just need to check the carrier regularly and make sure that the seams aren't, you know, starting to give way or anything. And he's got a question about um, how, how do you know that knees are in the knees are above hips in the correct position? Oh, okay. So if you, it's best if you look with your baby, um, without the carrier on so you can actually just see what it feels like um, so you know just look with your baby sideways in the mirror and you can see that oopsie that baby's knees a bit like over rotating <laughs> like this so holding your baby up and you can see there the knees are up so it could just have a look with your baby without a carrier on and then the little pelvic tilt that I showed you where you lean forward drop the tailbone down and then push up on the knees, and that will help get into that position. Okay, any more questions before I tackle the woven wrap? Let's really see. tangle myself up. We've got one, I think, relating to just wash care. Is it okay to leave them in the sun? They might fade. You know, if you leave your jeans <laughs> in the sun, they will fade. And, you know, if it's something that is precious to you and you've invested a lot of money in, then, you know, I wouldn't leave it out all day in the bright scorching sun. But, you know, you do have to wash and dry them. So just be, um, be mindful of the kind of middle of the day really hot sun. And anything dark like a black carrier, you know, black canvas will probably fade more than something like a light grey. We've got a question about... Um Keeping baby cool in the carrier, should we cover those? Let's cover that at the end if we get time. Oh, James, do you want to draw our ring sling? Ring sling, yeah. What do we... Ring sling. Ring sling. Mm. Oh, that would explain all the people that... <laughs> ring sling! <laughs> ring sling! <laughs> you want a ring sling? Two minutes. Okay. okay, James will be back with the winner while I'm going to attempt to show you how to tie a woven wrap. Um, I will say right now that I'm certainly not a woven wrap expert, <laughs> and it's not something I've used with my own kids, but... You know, I have learnt to do it, to the point that I can demonstrate it, and I could teach you if you were here in person. So this is a size 6, and probably, um, if you're thinking about what carrier should I get, like I do remember this was meant to be like an introductory, what carrier <laughs> should I get? Um, and we've kind of looked at all of the ones that are more commonly thought of as an entry level or a simple thing to use. 
Um, a woven wrap looks a little terrifying and there's so many options of fabrics and weights and colours and all of that and it can just the sheer like size of it can be a bit overwhelming. And then you have to choose which size. So size 6 um, is what I'm going to be using. I'm about a 12 to 14 size to give you um, something to gauge that from. Size 6 is about 4.6 metres long and that's an average size wrap. So if you're fluffier than I am, you might need a 7 or you might not, um, depending on how you tie it. Or if you're really little, like um, you know, a 6 or an 8 or a 10, then maybe a size 5 or even a 4 if you're really little. Um, the key thing about a wrap is that the way that you tie it um, determines the length you need as much as your own size. So I'm going to show you a front wrap cross cross carry. So we go, it's going to be go wrap across and then cross cross and tie up. I'm not going to talk while I do it because I have to concentrate. Something like Lou, um, we have not lost sound. Lou is concentrating. Need <laughs> <laughs> some incidental. Lou's going to cheat and use the mirror to <laughs> <laughs> while not talking. Okay, so I'm just going to do. I'm not going to do like a perfect wrap job for you. I don't actually know how to do a perfect wrap job. I'm just going to give you the basic run through. What makes so, this wrap? This is a yarrow, and you see that um, graduated colour makes it so much easier if you're learning to wrap. So you can see here, I've got the blue around the top, and then the blue here, and the blue here. And so this tightens the middle. So if I had pink here, I'd know that I had cocked it up, and it's going to make it really hard to adjust it. So, so a, um, a striped wrap is definitely good for learners, rather than something like an all-over print. All over the way. Okay, so have you want your middle marker in the middle? And that's the basic kind of shape, across the middle, over there. Again, this is not a tutorial, this is just a quick demonstration to see if this might be the right kind of carrier for you. Okay, so here's the same as in the other carriers we've seen. Supported up to the knees. Baby Willy. Fabric. Hands up. Fabric up to the back of the neck. And all the excess fabric we want up under the knees. So we don't want any extra fabric here, we just want to keep tightening it down. And then we're going to start to tighten it. When we were talking about good options for summer, a woven wrap is a really good option for summer. Um, because you can see there's only one layer of fabric over the baby, whereas with a stretchy wrap we had two crosses and the wrap. So there's lots of different techniques for tightening and getting the fabric in the right place, but this, this is just the quick and dirty way. Just give it a good yank, make sure it's tight here. If you can see it's floppy here, then you find the blue part and just tighten the blue a little bit more. Um, a new brand or brand that we've just recently started stocking from England called Callan Blue, which is like a really lightweight summer wrap. Please excuse that noise, we're having some plumbing work done for our air conditioner. Right, so because I'm not much of a wrapper, this will probably need quite a bit of adjustment, but you can see basically wrap across, crosses over the back. Support round under the bum, pelvic tilt, Oop. knees are higher than the bum. Plenty of um, airways are clear and free. So there you go. I'm a learner rapper demonstrating live on Facebook. That's probably the scariest thing ever. <laughs> Just kidding. But my purpose of showing you woven rap is that often people think 
it's way too hard, it's way too complicated, it's not suitable for your first uh, rat, your first carrier, but it totally is. I've only just recently learned how to do it. It's actually not that hard, it just requires a little bit of practice. And then, main advantages of a woven wrap compared to stretchy wrap or compared to a buckle carrier is that this is very light and summery. You can also, there's like a million to choose from and you can choose the prettiest coloured one that you want. Yeah, so for summer options, just briefly, ring sling, I mean woven wrap or a wing, ring sling are good summer options. Uh, a, a lightweight may tie is a good option. Stretchy wrap is on the warmer end of the spectrum. Carriers with the insert um, are on the warmer end of the spectrum because you've got, you know, polyester um, padding in there. Just the tula without the insert. If you've got a bigger baby, that's a pretty cool option. Um, or there's quite a lot of carriers that have a mesh version. Like a Lily Baby All Seasons that has mesh panel or the Beko Gemini Cool Mesh, which we'd show you apart from we sold them all because they're our best selling carrier. <laughs> so um, I think maybe stock is due any day now if you want a Beko Gemini Cool Mesh. Okay, any last requests? Oh, have you got our winner of our. Uh, Samantha Steer. What was that? Samantha Steer. Samantha Steer, the beautiful Tula ring sling, is yours. Ta-da! I was going to keep this one to play with, but I thought you might like it instead. It's very beautiful. If you're in Auckland, you can come in for a ring sling lesson. Or if you're not, we'll just send it to you. So if you just email our inquiries, we'll sort that out with you. Right, any last requests? Do you think the Manduka with the three months old? No, we didn't. Um, I'll give that a go. Actually, that's no, that, that really requires your actual baby to get that to fit right. So the person who had the Manduka question, if maybe if you want to drop us an email separately and we'll see if we can answer that for you. We've got that last one for Rihanna Kelly. Yeah, what's the most supportive uh, for someone with a so shoulder injury? Yeah, um... I don't know, it depends. If it's that you can't put weight on one shoulder, then maybe a ring sling on the opposite shoulder, but then you're still going to be using that shoulder. I think probably just try a number. See if you can go meet with a consultant or um, your local sling, sling group, or if you've got a shop near you, if you're near here, pop in. Um, or if you've got a shop that's got a bunch of carriers to try. Sometimes people, you know, carriers fit differently. And it's, if you've got some kind of medical condition, it's really good to, to try a few and speak with a professional if you can to, you know, before you spend a whole lot of money and buy something that may or may not fit. I mean, my first thought would be that a soft structure carrier with some good padding would be a good place to start, but it, but it also might be that something like this that you can tie just right for you might also work really well. Yeah. Any last requests? No, I think we're good. Question, we're all good. Well, thank you, James, for your question services. <laughs> <laughs> and Georgie for filming. And we hope that that was useful. Um, and yeah, the best carrier is the one that's right for you and for your lifestyle. And if you need any help to choose, um, James is very busy on our website making beautiful comparison charts. And um, he's going to post a link to the carrier landing page that's got all our questions and all our information. And you can find it all there. Lots of videos. And lots of, lots of videos showing lots of things. Probably better demonstrations that I've just given you. <laughs> See you later!